Welcome to the first day of the 35th Ryder Cup matches. This is a match number one, a four ball match between the European team represented by Colin Montgomery and Padre Harrington against the United States of America team represented by Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods. Here, even the mighty have a case of the nerves. My legs go stiff and I can't feel them. And uh, I go very cold. Nobody should be put under that amount of pressure. The nervousness is good. It heightens your concentration, it heightens your awareness, but it's how you handle it. Every time I play, I'm nervous. If I'm not nervous, I don't care. Neither of the Europeans found the fairway. Surely Sutton's towering twosome would have an advantage. But it was over three when Mickelson's tee shot strayed way left. So now Wood set about the task of keeping on the straight and what to them seemed an increasingly narrow target. Amazing, from the split second of contact, the ball of Woods went right, and way right. Proof positive, if any were needed, that no one's immune to those infamous first tee jitters. Since Saturday afternoon at Kiowa Island in 1991, Montgomery has not missed a single Ryder Cup session. This was his 28th straight match, and from that shot, you get the drift as to why he's been ever present. Montgomery was in the process of setting the tone. And Conley rolled in his birdie putt to allow the Europeans to draw first blood. But this was a dual effort, and together, Monty and Harrington managed a birdie on each of the opening four holes to rock their illustrious opposition and to suggest that Sutton's bold move might well backfire. Woods continued the general theme of excellence on display with his second at the fifth. Having an uncanny knack to judge the slippery slopes of Oakland Hills. Even so, Europe was one up at the turn. The whole situation was worrying for Sutton, who nevertheless remained convinced that Woods and Mickelson would strike back. In fact, in the lead match, most were anticipating an American revival. Monty, though, wasn't giving an inch. And with holes fast running out, Sutton's words of encouragement were well-timed. The morning was going very much Europe's way, and their stranglehold on proceedings was maintained when Harrington birdied the 14th to shockingly leave Mickelson and Woods three down with four to play. Mickelson tried his best to salvage something, keeping the contest alive with a birdie at 16. But a safe and sure par from Monty at the 17th was enough to give Europe a two and one victory, not to mention an immeasurable psychological boost. Sutton's expression told the story. The ever-expanding golfing world soon discovered that Sutton was sticking to his game plan by keeping Mickelson and Woods together in the afternoon. Their opposition this time, provided by Clark and Westwood. Was Sutton on the mark? We would soon find out. Europe was two up starting the back nine. At least you thought Woods and Mickelson would lift America's dampened spirits. It looked like they would when Tiger's floating three wood to the second became a candidate for the shot of the day and was the springboard for the United States to storm three up through five. 
Mickelson and Woods, though, bogeyed the relatively simple sixth, and that opened the doors for Westwood to create a European birdie at the seventh. Now, only one hole divided them. Europe's stubborn streak kept them very much in touch with the Americans. The pinpoint accuracy of Jay Haas would enable him and DeMarco to seal an invaluable three and two victory over LeVay and Jimenez. Would it be the start of a sustained revival or a mere interruption to Europe's supremacy? The many assembled around the 17th green thought it might well be the former when two shots in a bunker a rare slip from the previously watertight Westwood and Clark helped Mickelson and Woods to march on to the 18th tee all square, having been one down with two to play. But what followed was hard to imagine. Mickelson's three wood off the tough par four 18th strayed way to the left. It didn't quite go out of bounds, but a penalty drop was needed from the boundary fence. And the so-called dream team made a nightmare double bogey six and suddenly lost. Shortly afterwards, Garcia and Donald beat Perry and Sink two and one. And that, along with a convincing win for Harrington and Monty, meant that Europe finished the opening day with a record-breaking lead and then Sutton tried to explain his Mickelson and Woods pairing. I said it yesterday in the opening ceremonies. I felt like the world wanted to see them together. I wanted to see them together. I think they wanted to see each other together. And we gave it a good shot, and uh, we're going to have to move on.